Uh, next, we got Poco playing in Hollywood. A little bit of Kiriko gameplay. Uh, says this game was so much fun. I probably could have handled some situations better, but I took some risks and most of them paid off. We lost the game before uh, against the Hanzo. His name was Aimbot Ash. And they were being toxic about it. Oh, okay. We love our toxic gamers, right? Cool. All right. It's been a while since we've seen some uh, Hollywood gameplay, so. I'm ready for this. Oh, you got the pink skin. That's kind of cute. Kiriko, pink skin, chat. On a scale of 1 to 10, how are we rating it? I give it a solid. I give it a solid. The hair's kind of weird, but I give it a solid maybe 8. Cool. Um, there's really no reason to. Uh, there's really no reason to keep exposing yourself to these angles. Um, you're like walking way out into the open and then rotating back for no reason. You know what I mean? It's like pick an angle. Um, you can always jiggle peek corners uh, and give you like like you you just want to softly rotate around these as you're like pressuring things. And if you're just healing, you don't even need to peek at all, right? So just play here. So when you want to get a little bit of kunai damage, you can peek and then do that damage. And then when they start shooting back at you, just kind of fall back here and do your healing. Um, those big rotations are just a little unnecessary. <laughs> Nice. That honest. That is a perfect example of why you never stand still in Overwatch. <laughs> Always AD strafe. Good cleanse. Great cleanse. Good job there. Two. Good push. Way to use your uh, mobility. You get the high ground there. Get a little bit of an angle. Kitsune rush. Um, let's take a look at this. Uh, yep. 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 Questionable, right? Questionable. We already had this information. We already had this information that there were only two of us. And there were, um, right, three of them. One, two. Three. which again is fine like 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 a 2v3 is fine if it was like if it was like you or sorry if it was like you and sig like if, if it was you and you had a sig versus this this would have been completely fine right because a consuming rush with a sig can can there's a pretty good chance that you can kill a kiri or sorry not a kiri but a, a ash or the kiri over here or Ana, like this, that's not bad. The problem is you're running with an Ash and a Kitsune Rush, a Kitsune Rush Ash doesn't really, it's just not consistent damage. And she's also super vulnerable inside of that. So this is just kind of, I'd probably say another panic ult um, of us wanting to use that. Again, we just need to have the accurate, accurate information to make a call like that. And I just, I don't think we made a good call there. We're Obviously together. we're not gonna win this. Unless our Ash is actually popping up. Hold on. Hold on. Am I actually eating my words here? Stop. Wait, am I actually eating my words right now? Holy shit. Never mind. Fuck me. We win. Stop. Ah, fuck me, dude. Fuck me. Fuck me. <laughs> the, the Ash just do deaths with the fucking support. Uh, you know, fuck it. Don't listen to me. I don't know anything. <laughs> What's your go to McDonald's order? Also, has the Trash Man Torp skin come out yet? Uh, it has not. Um, two McDoubles uh, with no onions because the onions suck. Scooter, thank you for the Welcome back for 20 months. Thank you, brother. That's a, that's a lot of months there, man. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you for the prime, dude. Cool. Like they were playing safe here. Did you blade? Make sure to jump that nice. 
cool. That's fine. You guys get wiped anyways. Give him play of the game. Why not? Why not? He's earned it. Nanoblade. And it's it's kind of one of the, Nanoblade's kind of one of those alts where I'm like, you know, unless we like shut down the Nanoblade pretty early, I kind of just accept that we're probably gonna lose that fight just because it's so strong. So strong. So especially when I hear Nanoblade come out, I'm always keeping an eye on the kill feed to make like, all right, do I want to commit? Do I should I just wipe right now? Yeah, when I hear that Nana Blade, I'm just eyeing the kill feed. I'm like, all right, who's dying? And then I'm always surprised when like nobody dies. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, let's go. Wait, we can actually take this fight. Okay. It's a great rusher too. Yeah, when you're running a Rhine with Kiri, it really simplifies the uh, the ulting process because as long as your Rhine's there and the team is like somewhat nearby, just sending it, sending a Kitsune rush into them with the Rhine swing and the extra speed is is great. It, it's so easy. Is it is it, if you're playing Kiri and you have a Reinhardt dude, it makes it so much easier to just do good Kitsune rushes. It's like, all right, is your Rhine there? Is the enemy team kind of close by? All right, Kasuna Rush. <laughs> Under my protection. You're all good. That one is ultra out of position. Good follow up. Cool. All right, so far so good. Okay, Bob goes in. He gets slept. We use the cleanse prematurely. Coalescence comes out. They can see rush and blade. We're down their tank and their supports. Keep an eye on the kill feed. Easy bunny. Easy money. I think we just kind of ran that thing down, dude. And it worked out really well in our favor. Um, so this would, th it, so far, I would probably say this is just them getting absolutely stomped by the Reinhardt Kiri combo. And also them just not winning many team fights and not getting many team fights. You know, there was like one team fight on second and one team fight on third. So this team was kind of struggling to get more team fights in. Okay, checking out defense. Let's go. Under my protection. Sense good cleanse. Always better safe than sorry. Cool. Yeah, it's a great angle for you to get some damage here. Running the Widow, though, I... Yeah. Man, our Ash is really popping off right now. This is cool. He has run this down. Yeah, this is great. Not much you really have to do as a Kiriko right now. It's kind of just, like, let them kind of win the fight. Um, as they're struggling to push through. But especially if you guys can hold this choke. Helping out with that spam as they're pushing up, especially if they're going to be running Ryan. Or, sorry, uh, Arissa. Um, spamming those chokes as much as you can. Your team doesn't seem to be taking too much damage, so I wouldn't really worry too much about pocketing everybody. Take a nice off angle as Kiri. Get a Moira there to help heal. Good cleanse, love that. Huge Bob. It's picking the uh, Zen here. Yeah, yeah, they're struggling, man. This, <laughs> this team's struggling big time.
All right, let's see how we use this Kitsune Rush here. Nice reaction to that Genji dash. Beautiful. We drop that. Nice job jumping to cleanse that fire from you. Big slam. Yeah, pretty good so far. I'm liking the reaction to this Genji that you're doing too. Good survivability. <laughs> we thought we had cleanse. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling. I don't know. I'm seeing some really good stuff. Uh, reaction with the, the Suzus. I love that you're not afraid to chuck a Suzu um, in moments like that, especially on your squishies. It's completely okay. Um, your Reinhardt's doing a great job contesting these chokes. They're not really taking the high ground, so he can kind of play like this as much as he wants. Okay, missed the cleanse. And Nana Blade. So, another shiny example of how Nana Blade just wins fights. <laughs> Nana Blade is one of the most consistent win conditions in Overwatch. What's up, Karma? Okay, lose our soldier here. 75 to Kitsune Rush. Don't be afraid to play this high ground here. As long as you're not getting pressured by the DPS, you can really just hang out here. I love this. Yeah, chill here. Find the angles. Heal him up. Duh, I'd, I'd be careful of just standing still, though. All right. It's kind of one of those unwritten rules of Overwatch. Never stand still. Because the moment you do, you will get shot in the head and you will die. There's the Bob. Don't know if we need the Katsune just yet. See how they play. Bob's almost down, especially low. I'd probably drop the Katsune now. Now that we're matched, you want the advantage here. Here comes Slam. God, there's somebody else coming out right now. Oh my God, there's somebody else. Okay, a little late for that one. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, let's let's talk econ for a second. Why why was this um just late to like like there's definitely times to drop Cassini Rush. This was just like really late. Let's just watch this here for a second. Surrender to my will. Kill the like here's fine. Here's fine, because they're for the most part we're sustained, they're matching it. We want an advantage with pressure, so we could Sunny Rush right here, but we don't. They live. We get that, and then we slam. Okay, we've got people on fire. Probably would cleanse this here. I think we do. We cleanse that. Bob comes in now. Again. Okay to drop Kitsune. I I still might even drop it right here, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, there's just too much pressure. And I think you probably did that before you saw the criticals. But again, it's just so much pressure. Um, it's it's so late into the fight, and it's kind of like my rule of thumb with, with Kyrial is like the earlier the better, right? If you're gonna use it, that fight, use it earlier, never later. It's not an ultimate you hold on to and then respond. Um, it's something that you want to use to get an advantage uh, in a fight, and it lasts for so long. So it's like you don't really have to hold on to it for like the perfect moment. Just like drop that shit. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna fight that fight with Kitsune Rush. Drop that shit. Do it. Tactical visor ready for deployment. Join me. Good cleanse. I like that. The premature cleanse during the blade so your soldier can stay alive for the visor. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah, we don't win the fight, but it was really smart gameplay. 
Um, it, it's showing me that you're really understanding, um, like analyzing what's happening around the area and then committing to the ults that you have on the board, making sure the people that are ulting actually stay alive to get value. Um, like prematurely, you hear the blade goes off, soldier pops visor, you know that he's probably gonna blade on your soldier. So you just prematurely throw that cleanse to make sure you can live long enough to, uh, to get value with it. It was it was actually really smart and it worked out too, right? He engaged right when you threw the cleanse. Cleanse is right when he dashed in and went for the, the slash. This is really smart. Okay, and goes Bob. Kutsunero's ready to go. Bob almost down. They're down their mech. So don't really need to drop the Kutsunero yet. I'd be keeping an eye down a player. We might want this if they play aggressive. Yeah, their Gundy's in. I dropped this. Perfect timing. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, he, he finds the pick, but it's definitely the time you want to drop that. <laughs> well, they're just chilling out with this <laughs> this diva. <laughs> Oopsies. Definitely play for OT. Nice. I think we get OT here. Nice. Big OT. Yeah. The OT here is nice enough, though. Obviously, go for the one if you can, but it looks pretty good. Cool. All right, looking good. Um, yeah, I think I think did we just make a little oopsie there before with the uh, did we not have cleanse ready, or did we just forget about it, or at least at least jump right during that that bomb? I think we just kind of panicked a little bit. So a little bit of oopsie there. Probably the reason they capped it, but you know, shit happens. Early cleanse. No problem with that. He did that plenty of shield though. So just be aware of that. But again, it's pretty early on. So you'll probably get it back in time. Yeah, I probably just sustained this push here a little bit to get enough space to make a play. Your Ryan's pretty low on shield. So I doubt he's going to be pushing in. Great time to cleanse. Yeah, it came up. Take an opportunity for an off angle here. Yeah, he's kind of just standing around. He'll figure it out, though. It's a lot of damage. A lot of damage for Ryan to push through. If he's smart, I'd probably switch to the D.Va just because they're running so many projectiles. Oh, look at this sneaky play. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. We take these. Oh, we take these. This works. Forced out. Oh, my God. That's two. Beautiful. Dude, this is what I'm talking about. Cleanse that and get out of there. Nice. Holy shit. Hell, yeah. That's some Kiri gameplay, baby. Let's fucking go, dude. Gloves are off right now, man. Gloves are off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, cheap package. <laughs> dude, that that was some Kiri gameplay, dude. Definitely took advantage of the opportunity there. Them feeding a little bit, like in positioning. But God, man, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That's how you win a point, man. I mean, I know you weren't playing that aggressive all game, but dude, that that's shown right there, man. That was, that was beautiful. Yeah, uh, good stuff. Um, considering rushes, obviously, still a little bit weird, a little bit wonky. Suzu's are great. Positioning sometimes, we're just like positioning in a way that's just like adding more pressure to us for whatever reason. But yeah, cleanses are good. Parking to Reinhardt. Yeah, you live for the most part. I didn't really see you feeding too much. So it was actually really, really good carry gameplay. Not gonna lie, the coaching has helped me a lot to have the confidence to try something like this. Yeah, and you should. You should. It's tough. That's the biggest. I mean, uh, my support players will probably back me up on this. 99% of supports that I hear from always say that they're scared if they stop healing, people are gonna die. That's what I always hear. But then you also hear 
they, you also hear people like support players always like high tier support players always say you need to put more pressure you need to do pressure you can't always just be healing if you're only heal botting you're not going to win games you got to pressure but the moment you stop healing you feel like they're going to die and it's like you have to just be okay with letting them figure out that they're not getting all the healing in the world once they start realizing that when they take damage it doesn't that hp doesn't come back that quick they start to play safer right um, which is what they need to do anyways. So, uh, most of the time, if you're just like pocket healing someone, you're just enabling their bad habits. Um, sometimes it's okay. Especially like if you want somebody to play super aggressive, like you're running a Reinhardt, right? Like you want him to play hyper aggro. So you're just like pumping healing into him. So he can just like keep going aggro, uh, which is fine. But for a lot of, for a lot of, uh, comps, like people that like spam heal on like poke comps and stuff, it's like, dude, you're missing out so many, so much damage. Um, so much more value that you could be getting. So.